Hi, everyone. Welcome to September of 2024. I know. How did we get here? Holy cowabunga. This year has just simultaneously flown by and taken forever. I don't know how to work with that. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. Anyway, September. Wow. Okay. So in the English language, September kicks off the burr months, September, October, November, December. And where I live, November and December really are like burr kind of months. <laughs> it gets cold. Um, so September, we have so much to talk about, but I'm going to try to make it as bite-sized pieces as I can. So we start the month, now we're in Virgo season, and September is split um, by Virgo because the sun usually changes signs each month around the 20th, 22nd, somewhere in there. So we spend about two thirds of the month in one sign, and then we hit another sign the other third of the month. So we're in Virgo season now, and then later in the month, um, I'm not sure of the exact date, like I said, it's around the 20th, we move into Libra. So with September beginning in Virgo season, we have a new moon in Virgo because new moons are always in the same sun sign that we're in. So the second or third, depending on where you live in the world, we'll have a new moon in Virgo. And new moons are awesome for um, start, starting a new chapter. It's like a blank slate. So we're starting the month with a blank slate. And I love that journey for us. We're going to take a look um, a little bit here in this reading. I don't want it to go on too long, but I will do a separate reading specifically for the new moon and then one specifically for the full moon during the month. So stay tuned for those. The full moon, speaking of, is a super full moon eclipse in Pisces. <laughs> so everybody take a deep breath. <sighs> Here's why. The full moon will always take place in the opposite sign of the sun sign that we're in. So 12 zodiac signs, each one has an opposite sign. And um, the opposite of Virgo is Pisces. So earth and water are always opposite. Fire and air are always opposite. So with this energy, super full moon, full moons are, we're already crazy at the full moon. So the super full moon and it being an eclipse, Cowabunga. So we'll do its own dedicated reading because it deserves that um, later. But for now, we'll see what comes out during the reading. But for now, just note that'll happen around the 17th or 18th of September, again, depending on where you live in the world. So this month, um, especially the first 20 days-ish of the month, we're in Virgo season. So Virgo's an earth sign, awesome to get rid of any um, clutter or anything that's not working because Virgos, I love you, you know I do. Virgos are perfectionistic. So paying attention to those details and tweaking, making little tweaks. You don't have to make big, big changes, but like just little quarter turns. And it's like, oh, there we go. Perfect. Um, so detoxing, releasing the past. Um, it's a good time to physically declutter your life. So physically getting rid of stuff that doesn't serve you, rehoming it, or if it's broken, throw it away. If it can't be fixed, throw it away. Um, or repurpose it, upcycle it, whatever applies. The new moon in Virgo, because we're kicking off the month with it, um, really, there's a couple ways you could you could look at this. On one hand, um, there's a lot of Saturn and Pluto energy going on right now because they're making some moves this month. I'm not an astrologer and I don't play one on TV. So <laughs> feel free to find your favorite astrologer and find out what that means. Um, just know that Pluto is death rebirth. It's Scorpio, it rules Scorpio. So death and rebirth energy, the death card in tarot. Um, awesome energy, it's the Phoenix. It's pretty cool, it's great to work with. So getting rid of what doesn't work to make room for what does. That's great for this new moon. Um, 
And Saturn is a planet that is the ultimate taskmaster. It rules Capricorn. Capricorns, I love you, I do. But if um, there's anything that Saturn does well, it's hold us accountable and makes us learn lessons. And we're just going to repeat those lessons <laughs> until we learn them. So work with that energy. Um, so even if you're making your new moon wishes, manifestations, etc., cetera, um, and Saturn's holding you back, like, mm, are you sure you're ready for that? Did you learn everything? Really check on that. Okay. So it's a great time. Don't think that it's not a great time. Like, oh, what's the point then if Saturn's just going to be here hammering away? Saturn's a teacher. It just wants us to learn so that we can move forward and that we can fully embrace the good stuff that's coming in. So with this new moon, again, I'm not going to go into it too much, but we'll touch on it a little bit um, since we are kicking off the month with it. You can um, make a plan. <laughs> and I say that with a grain of salt um, because Virgo I, I love you. Virgos are fabulous. They're earth signs. They're really great at making a plan and they really want to stick to it. But if it's not perfect, then they might not implement the plan until they're absolutely sure. So don't be afraid to take some risks. Just kind of let that energy simmer a little bit. And, um, you know, don't let it, don't let it bring you down. Still get into your new moon manifesting, do your thing all the great stuff and using that full moon energy will be awesome to let go of any limiting belief systems that are like, Oh, what's the point? Or, um, it's, if it's not perfect, it's never going to work. I'm not going to do it. Or I thought I had the perfect plan and something went haywire. So insert negative thoughts here, clear, cancel, delete, let it go under the full moon. Um, it'll be a great time to evaluate what's working and what's not. And just to make that little tweak, because then we're going to hit Libra season and you'll be fine. So, <laughs> you know, make your plan. I know man plans, God laughs, right? But not necessarily. It's more like you make a plan and nobody ever says that old adage when stuff works. It's only when things don't work. And that's really getting into victim mentality. So let that go. Make your plan, adjust the sales if you need to. It's cool. So um, that's, that's a good way to use these two moon energies in Virgo and Pisces, because again, remember they're opposite signs to your advantage. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at overall energy for the month for you. And I'm also going to pull specific cards around career, love, um, and whatever else might come out. Definitely healing because high willow tree healing. It's what we do here. <laughs> so where's your opportunity for healing? Um, I've got some new decks that I'm really excited to play with. So yay. All right. So let's see what's going on. Let's get started. All right, Gemini. I am fighting lighting issues, <laughs> but okay. Hello, September for Gemini. What is going on for you guys this month? As always, reminder, it's a general reading. Take what resonates. Don't ever try to fit into a reading that's not your size. It's okay. <laughs> Oh, all right. Mm. Okay. Strength in reverse, the four of cups in reverse and reversals aren't bad. It's just a different way of reading the energy. It usually shows us where some blocks are, which are opportunities. So you've got the hierophant right in the middle. The nine of cups in reverse and the hierophant's also in reverse. So far, everything's in reverse and that's okay. We're going to navigate through it. Don't worry. Ah, the two of swords. Okay. 
some Artemis energy there. So let's see here. With the strength in reverse here, crowning the reading, that is about you finding your inner strength, you turning around and seeing that that roaring lion doesn't have any teeth nor claws. It can't hurt you. Okay. With the Four of Cups in reverse, that's a good thing uh, to me because the Four of Cups is about stagnancy. It's the Lamentations card, as I call it. So you're getting yourself out of it, or maybe you're stuck and you're not real sure why. You're trying to figure it out. Cups are emotions. The That's what shows us... Um, it's almost the grief card because the five of cups is definitely the grief card, but the four of cups, that's about, um, like feeling disconnected and, and such. So when it's in reverse, it's, um, becoming aware of where you've been stuck, why you've been stuck and choosing, isn't that empowering, choosing how to get out of that depression, that negativity, the, the yuck and stuck. Haha. <laughs> so, um, basically you're, you're getting this, you're, you're finding the strength to get through this time with the Hierophant in the reverse Hierophant's about tradition. So you rebel, you <laughs> coming out and saying, hello, um, I'm not going to, you're taking a non-traditional approach. That's what it says to me. Um, the Hierophant is um, usually depicted as a Pope being very papal, blah, blah, blah. But um, Hierophant is Taurus energy as well. Strength is Leo. That's all I see right now. So with this Hierophant being reversed, it's um, like being unconventional and non-conformist. You're a non-sequitur here. And I love that journey for you. So you're finding a new way to get through this. Um, maybe you're getting through it in a way that um, you weren't programmed. Let's go back to childhood programming here um, to get through. Or maybe you're getting through it in a way that um, is seen as unconventional by the people around you. Like, well, everybody else just drank. Okay, well, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go to counseling. I'm going to go to yoga, you know, whatever it is for you. Maybe you're taking a different job or um, you're going on a solo journey. You're not going to get, you're not interested in the whole marriage and family thing. You know, whatever it is for you, you know, maybe you're doing something different here. And I applaud you for that, having the courage to do that. If other people, other people's opinions, <laughs> if you know me, you know my stance, other people's opinions, take them with a whole salt shaker or margarita rim full of salt, because these opinions don't run your life. Don't pay your bills. Don't let you lay your head down at night and sleep well. It's okay to seek wise counsel. Um, that's also hierophant en energy, but Instead, you're going within and finding the answers within yourself, Gemini, doing what's right for you. And I will support you through that all day, every day. The Nine of Cups in reverse. Nine of Cups is usually um, like a wishes fulfilled sort of energy. So when it's in reverse, like that hasn't done well for me. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to do something different. Um, like that has not fulfilled me. That hasn't helped me achieve the things that I want to achieve in life. So I'm not going to do it anymore. No, huh? No, thanks. You know, maybe it was a, a job that you thought was your dream job and it turned out to be a nightmare. Been there, done that. I've told my story about that a few times. What I thought was my dream job actually ended up being horrible. And not because the job so much, nor my ability to do the job, that was all in place. But I realized that not everybody was on board with the mission and the purpose and the drive. So I decided to go out on my own and figure it out for myself. With the Two of Swords, maybe you're doing that. Two of Swords is usually um, 
somebody it's like crossed the swords are crossed maybe you're at a crossroads um figuring out which way you want to do this do i want to take the conventional path or no well your answer is already there no you're not you're not taking that conventional path um she's aiming her arrow but she's blindfolded so you know maybe it's a like a party trick <laughs> hey check this out look what i can do uh, i can even i can do it with my eyes closed um i think there's there's a song about that i can do it with my eyes closed i know taylor swift has i can do it with a broken heart probably the same energy um but going through and, and maybe even so i'm hearing blind faith that you're going to hit that target like, i got this her arrows pointed down a little bit and anyone who knows archery knows you want to point up a little bit so you know maybe making sure that your arrow isn't pointed down and you're setting your expectations and your bar too low aim high aim high gemini Ooh, love that that's cute okay so <laughs> i have soul coaching cards here um they have a nice way of calling us out so let's see what came out for you. Am I ready to let go of this buried shame? Ooh, shame, blame, guilt. Is that where this is coming from, Gemini? Uh-uh, no more of that. The feeling of shame is the lowest energy frequency there is. Mm-hmm. When you live in shame, you live in darkness. What part of you is ready to stand in the light unconventional? Is there any shame from a past experience that is ready to be healed? We'll pull from the healing deck next. So your soul action or your meditation or guidance um, journal prompt. Heal the shame by giving it a name. Bring it to the light and let it be seen, heard, and healed. It's revival season. Replace the shame with your soul's truth. Fill in the blank. My soul's truth is. My soul's truth is oh that's beautiful oh okay so there's your homework name it name the fear name the shame what is it where does it come from whose voice is it because it's not yours Let's see what you are being invited to heal what is coming up for healing no more shame. No more shame. Nope. We're not playing that game anymore. Sadness. Yep. Four of cups energy. Uh, letting that go. And there could be an element of sadness to letting it go. Um, but you've got this, Gemini. Chemistry. Okay. So if this is a love situation for you, uh, maybe this is, uh, and this was coming up, a little bit earlier um you know maybe this is an unconventional relationship maybe there's a large age difference or a cultural religious difference um maybe it's lgbtq plus you are safe here hi it's all good um you know whatever it is it's just different and there are people around you other people's opinions who are like oh i don't know about that and you're like mm, doesn't involve you don't care thanks bye <laughs> i'm not gonna let you shame me into this. I'm not going to let you shove me back down. I'm not going to let you cut me down. There are plenty of interracial, interfaith, whatever relationships that work beautifully because love doesn't know gender identity, uh, any kind of boundaries around religion or society or whatever it is. Love knows no bounds. Love is unconditional. And if it's not unconditional, then it's conditional. And that can take a flying leap. So, <laughs> so there's that. I'm going to pull a unicorn. That's what the unicorns have for you. You're being a unicorn here in Gemini. You're being um, different and beautiful and shining your light brightly. And I love that journey for you. Abundance. Enjoy the beauty of life. Your supply is unlimited. Blessings are coming to you. 
magic. This is exactly how my unicorn looks to me when he first comes in. It's so, so great. Maybe connect with your personal unicorn. I love it. Make a wish. Believe in miracles. Magic surrounds you. Ooh, yes. And delight. Count your blessings and enjoy life. And what that means is just gratitude. Gratitude for everything that you have. Even if it's not exactly what you want or wish you had, like if you wish you had a bigger house and you have a studio apartment or something like that. I'm so grateful that I have a safe place to lay my head down at night. I'm so grateful for my hot shower. I am so grateful for my bed and pillows and, and blankets, you know, things, just things look around. There's a lot. I'm, I'm so grateful for my body's ability to get up and move, to breathe, to, you know, whatever. Take pleasure in simple things. Yep. And always expect the best. Oof. Beautiful. And one more deck from the Spellcasting Oracle. Getting a little sticky with all the energy. <laughs> all right. Compassion. Yep. Have compassion for yourself and for others. And, you know, I'm, I'm knocking other people's opinions because people are just so free to give their opinion, even when it's not asked nor necessary <laughs> to give. But having compassion for people because they can only give advice through their own filter of experience. So if somebody's projecting something onto you, like their own fear, their own shame, let it go. Like, nope. Protect yourself in a bubble of light and let it bounce off of you into an angelic basket that gets lifted up for transmutation and healing. I'm not a big fan of return to sender because that's yucky. Um, if you can let it be so that it's transformed, transmuted by the divine to shower back down on you as abundance and blessings. Beautiful. All the better. Train yourself to do that. It takes some work, but you can do it. I have faith in you, Gemini. <laughs> so beautiful month. Um, very interesting energy. Let me know what's going on. Tell me. Share your story in the comments. You never know who is going to read that and benefit from it, from your story. Beautiful. If you want to dive deeper into this, get your own energy in here. All of my information is in the description box below. So feel free to reach out to me. We'll set up something for you. Um, otherwise have a fabulous month and I will see you soon. Thanks for being here. Take care.